Thank you, Michelle. A uh, warm welcome to everyone. Um, have you heard this quote? We are uh, uh, we are among uh, we are the result of the five friends we associate with. Many of us have heard this, right? I'm grateful to this community for having us associated in a healthy environment week on week and every day in our lives. Hi, this is Joyce Prabhu here. I'm super excited to talk to you about how children's health can get transformed. Uh, in fact, my transformation of almost 16 kgs weight loss has impacted me and my family a big way in a very positive way. Um, if you see, my children have uh, seen a big transformation in the way we cook, the food we eat, and inspired by my weight loss, my husband has also lost almost 16 k 10 kgs of his weight. And uh, here we would look into seeing how children's health can be impacted in the long way. And uh, I'll be sharing with I'll, um, So here are some of the smart choices to boost your children's health. So we have many parents here in this call, right? Um, so these are some of the common concerns what we face for our children, right? Uh, what our children face um, on a day-to-day -day basis, be it stomach pain, obesity, frequent uh, fever, cold cough, aches and pains, hormonal imbalances, early maturity, uh, respiratory issues, allergies and rashes. Why don't you type out on this chat box about what do you face for your children's health? What are the most common causes, right? If you see stomach pain, many of us worry whether it's a stomach pain which the, is, is due to what the child had yesterday or a few days back, or be it some, some kind of allergies and rashes which happens to children, right? Uh, whether it was something which triggered the allergies, whether it was a dust or pollen or something that triggered the allergies for the child, right? Most common issues like respiratory issues or hormonal issues. So what are, what are the factors which impact the child's health? There are many factors which impact this, uh, impact children's health, right? Some of which being unseen factors, which are inside the house, uh, be it in the form of uh, molds. Uh, some corner of the house has a mold, right? But did you know that that is a big impact in our children's health? right? Uh, use of uh, plastic water bottles or plastics to store our food items. They all release a lot of microplastics which are affecting our children's health, right? The quality of the air, it might be a construction which is happening in your neighborhood, but that does impact your child's health. It could be something where uh, your cooking methods, yeah, we might be cooking the best of the best food, but how about uh, some things where your child's uh, nutrition levels are not met because of the vessels which are utilized for cooking or because of the heat, the overheat or the high flame cooking, which impacts the nutrients that are present in the food. Now that schools and colleges have started, many of us opt for uh, new different boxes. Are we opting for steel or are we opting for plastics? Because that food which goes in the morning, which is hot, is uh, it's like it's, it's hot till the afternoon, but there's a lot of toxins which are getting produced inside the food. Right? Lack of physical activity. After the COVID situation, many of our children are exposed to the gadgets and a lot of uh, social media, right? So some of which being more of screen time after school hours or over the weekends, right? More of uh, sitting. Now sitting is a new smoking is what we get to hear because constant sitting increases the waist and hip ratio for the right from the childhood days and this impacts the child's health in the future. Uh, disrupted uh, circadian rhythm. What do you mean by this? Um, many of the children finish their chores, but they sit in a digit in a they sit with a gadget by the end of the day. And what happens? The circadian rhythm gets uh, disturbed. What do you mean by the circadian rhythm? There's an internal clock within all of us, and once you see a blue light, 
the uh, the clock within us gets alerted. There's a hormone which is called melatonin, which gets produced. That gets uh, uh, suppressed. When that gets suppressed, then the sleep gets delayed. Though the child sleeps, the sleep get the deep sleep and the sleep pattern disturbs by one to two hours. So it's always advised for our children not to watch gadgets and devices at least one hour before we hit bed. Mental well-being. This does impact our children's health. There's a lot of things that go around in school, but are we talking to our children after them, after they come back home? What are they going through, right? And are we providing the right environment for them to uh, grow stronger and face these bullies, right? Um, sometimes uh, our children have show up tantrums in outbursts of anger, but we we never realize why, what could be the root cause of these outbursts right? Best thing to do is talk to our children, talk to your child and see where, what you could do to empower them. We do have lovely programs which help them build healthy habits and these programs are designed specifically to the, to your, for your children. Do get in touch with the person who's invited you. They will help you get access to these programs which can help your child build healthy habits on a monthly basis. The next thing is what are the internal reasons for com for all these concerns, right? Um, why does my child fall sick quite often, right? Uh, why does uh, my child have an uh, immunity issue? Why does my child have stomach aches? There could be external factors. Now we'll focus on the internal factors. Is it that we are eating right or eating, just eating, right? Um, see, before we started, before me and my husband started on this program, on our wellness journey, like how Raj Lakshmi had trans transformed her health, before that, like means to say, when before we started, our food also had a lot of carbs, a lot of protein, but it wasn't balanced. The veggies used to go like pickles somewhere. That's what even our children followed. It was not that children were eating um, more of veggies. No, not at all. Our children also eat, used to eat very less, right? And um, thanks to this program, because that is what helped me get a balance on my food portions, right? Um, eating a balanced meal comprises of more of veggies, fruits, proteins, carbohydrates, good fats. Yes, good fat, fats are there in our food, but we never know whether it is um, good or bad, right? After this program, we got to know what kind of good fats to include in the uh, in, our, in our diet. And by watching us, our children made a big transformation in their diet as well, right? Uh, because in a usual uh, household, South Indian household, it would used to be a lot of rice, then uh, sambar and a little bit of veggies. Or if it's a non-veg diet, it would be more of... Uh, a biryani and where will the veggies come into place absolutely no right so but having a balanced meal really helped us tone down and get to a healthy weight so why does a child need a balanced meal um, how does it impact a child's health see some of the food that the child eat goes in for improving their height and weight right then it goes for their organ functions like their uh, uh, their and their hormonal health right and some of which goes for their daily activities, but last of which is what goes into improving on their immunity levels. After all these functions are taken care, the child's immunity is what is focused on towards the end. The, so are we eating enough adequate for the child's immunity? Today, my topic is more focused towards are we reading labels? When we buy a snack, what do we watch? We watch for a red dot or a green dot. We watch for the expiry date. But are we watching for what is inside that? So here are some of the packaged uh, labels that you see on packaged foods. Cocoa butter, trans fat, vegetable shortening, palm oil, hydrogenated fat, saturated fat. See, some of the names are direct indications that they are not good, like trans fat, vegetable shortening, palm oil, hydrogenated fat, saturated fat. All these are direct indications. But some things like cocoa butter, they sound interesting, healthy, but they are added to press, added to a lot of refined flours, refined sugars, which is a deadly killer. So thereby the good thing what is added to all these refined items causes a lot of damage to your uh, child's health. So whenever you take a 
uh, take a packaged food from the shelf, read for these labels and put it back on the shelf because it's not no way going to help your child. Some of the simple uh, words, uh, uh, these are for um, uh, sugars, right? When you have a lot of packaged sugars, but they come with names like maltose, it, the label would have no sugar, no added sugar. But here, these are hidden words which are which you have to look out as parents. Maltose, malt extract, malt syrup, maltodextrin. All these are some of the words which start with malt or oats, sucrose, fructose, glucose. All these are also names for other names for sugars, some of which are syrups. So this malt, oats, syrup, all these are names which are given for hidden sugars. The word for aim, aspartame and uh, ASK, these are two things which are really deadly. They are artificial sugars. This ASK is something which is added to a lot of carbonated drinks. And it again, we don't get to read we don't go, uh, go to read it on a carbonated drink in specific, but when you look out for these names, you will definitely avoid. So what happens when all this enters our kids' health, right? Does it mean also that non-labeled foods are, uh, are healthy? Here are some of the non-labeled foods. What we go, we get to see on a birthday party or you get to see on a weekly basis when you go out for a uh, 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 weekend uh, treat. These are some of the foods which don't have labels, but they have a lot of refined flours, dalda, maida. All these things are deadly killers which only uh, add empty calories to your child's health, right? What do you mean by empty calories? It is like when you're having a very high end, um, uh, like a very big house in a posh area in Bangalore, but you're only using that house for as a go down to store carton boxes. That is how I would um, refer to as empty calories. Empty calories have nothing to do to add value to your child's health. It is only to occupy the space in your child's health. It actually causes more of fat deposition around the organs, causing more of future diseases. So what happens when kids eat processed food or packaged foods? Here, the gut health gets a big impact on this because there's a lot of bad bacteria which feeds on the processed food. Once the bad bacteria increases, then there's a decrease in the bad, bad good bacteria which leads to a lot of damage to the gut as such. And also lack of absorption of nutrients into the child's health. Child uh, into the child. So, for example, uh, like, did you know that your small intestine had a layer of uh, immunity cells, which actually supports and filters out all the toxins. Now, when you have a, when the child has a lot of these kind of processed and packaged foods, and the bad bacteria is increasing, then there's a big impact on the small intestine, leading to malabsorption of nutrients. And not only that, it also overacts and underacts the immunity cells which are present in the small intestine. If it overacts, it leads to autoimmune conditions, underacting, leading to a lot of other conditions like wheezing, as the nebulization for children, inhalers at a very young age, uh, children having um, PCOD issues, children having hormonal issues like thyroid, prediabetes. This is what we come across in today's world for children. At very young ages, they have all these conditions. So how do we avoid them? Do you know what's in the cream filling of Oreos? It's not dairy or real cream. It's two of the most powerful things at making us fat and sick. Seed oils and processed sugars. More specifically, canola oil and high fructose corn syrup. In a 2013 study in animals, researchers at Connecticut College found that Oreos turn on the pleasure center of the brain more than cocaine and morphine. And we give these to our children. The single greatest thing you can do to lose weight and become more healthy is to remove ultra-processed foods like Oreos from your diet, foods that contain processed sugars and seed oils. Removing these foods will significantly improve your health and your body composition. Of late, we've come across Oreo in different forms, right? From ice cream to uh, sweets, added to sweets, added to and by itself and in different flavors, right? 
So some of the things uh, which come in subtly into our child's health, a child into our homes, cause a big impact on our on our child's overall health, right? So here, and none of us had exposures to Oreo or any of uh, these ultra processed foods during our childhood, which is why our health is so much better, right? So here are some of the alternatives what we could include instead of having a um, straight uh, thing into our child's uh, diet because children love something which is colorful something which is tasty something which they are easy to eat right so here instead of having a sprout you could give alternatives like a patty or a dokla or making it into a dosa or making it a little more chatpata chat for the children as such right or um, some of the mothers say oh my child eats only a chicken she they don't like veggies why don't you add a little bit of chicken to the salad what you're preparing that creates a lot of difference when the child eats the salad as such or having a small piece of uh, paneer added to the salad it also includes to the protein but again it's something where it has to be where it's given on an occasional basis so that gives the child gets a child more uh, involved to eating veggies tweaking it into their diet some of uh, which being instead of giving a mayo you can give them a few dips like a cashew dip a hummus dip or an almond dip that makes a lot of difference in the health and the taste and the quality of the food that the child is eating instead of having canned or packaged uh, tomato soups or any kind of soups preparing soups at home makes a big difference right uh, veg vegetable soups which are easy to uh, easy for the child to have and you're also comfortable that your child is eating healthy right so here are some of the healthy habits what we could include for our children on a daily basis like washing their hands after they're back from school or enjoying a family meal together with switching off all the gadgets and having this meal time where the child is also involved in eating uh, everything she, the child is observing what the parents are eating slowly they too will build the habit right chewing the food making it a lot of fun and interesting for the child to chew their food on a, slowly and steadily right but uh, watch out in case your child has some dental issues they don't like to eat a particular food watch out for their dental issues because dental caries make children eat uh, avoid certain foods right? Rinsing their mouth after a meal, right? Staying hydrated. It's extremely important for our children to drink adequate water because sometimes they forget to drink the water or they drink the water in one go. And the uh, worst habit that could come in is drinking water in between the meal. That is something what we need to avoid, right? Uh, slowly and steadily, right? By avoiding water in between meals, reduces the hydrochloric acid in the stomach thereby that it interrupts the digestion process right and the last habit being brushing the teeth after uh, after their meal after their dinner so that that helps them maintain their dental health well now the last thing would be small changes gives big results right applauding for your child for every small change if your child has chosen a healthy meal over a junk, applaud for him or her. That makes a big difference for your child. Children love recognition. Give them a small reward in terms of um, a small star, what you would get in a stationery shop. Have a plan with them. Include them in give, giving them a reward for whatever they are give, uh, getting. And finally, let them have a good reward at the end of the month, right? And rewards needn't to be in terms of eating out. It can be in terms of other small books or toys, what they would enjoy, right? Including your child in a meal planning. It's always easy because what I do is I ask my children, okay, what's, what do you want for tomorrow? Because we mothers spend a lot of time in thinking what to prepare. When we enter the kitchen, we think, okay, what, what should we be done? What will the child find interesting? But including your child makes it easy for you and the child to have that accountability to what they have planned, right? Delegate work. Many a times we think, okay, I need to chop the veggies. I need to do the cooking. I need to do the cleaning. No, not required. If you have to help get someone to chop your veggies, pay them a small amount, that makes a big difference because end of the day, what happens is 
we are busy in our calls and the child asks us for a, a snack we end up eating giving them what is easy and convenient be it uh, in the nth moment you just pick up a junk and you give that's that's not what we intentionally want to do but because of lack of time this is what happens in many of our real life situations so it's always better to have a, someone to help you support in your daily activities and pay them that would help their family as well as help your family eat healthy one big thing what we have uh, started is uh, whenever the child asks for junk we take children out to malls or we just go out to do our grocery shoppings obviously there's a good package for a good section for junk right when a child asks for junk just bend down give a broad smile and say no they will listen and anyways they've read a lot with they've uh, they've seen a lot with regards to labels right so that would help them and um help them understand that it is not uh, okay to have a junk right and uh, more importantly here budget expense miscellaneous meals all these are come uh, under your planning section actually if you take an audit of your house on a daily basis or on a weekly basis about how much you are spending for junk believe me it will be much more than what you are uh, grocery expenses or it would be equal to your grocery expenses so watch out on all or uh, what you are spending as junk for your child and see how you can make healthy swaps and last but not least children do what we do and not what we tell them to do uh, i'm so happy that my husband and i were able to make a big transformation in our health and watching us our children have started to include these healthy habits in a daily basis uh thanks to this environment thanks to the wq community because without this community we wouldn't have been able to achieve what we have achieved in our health and um with this um i have something very special for parents um uh, parents do reach back to the person who has invited you they will give you a form for uh, your child's overall assessment and on filling this form you would get a lot of ideas a few ideas and tips on how you can include healthy swaps into your child's diet in the form of recipes recipe cards and reels feel free to reach out to the person who's invited you and get in touch with them for further details on your child's health with this i'm done thank you